you're live and live in color. There we are. All right. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this evening's Power Podcast All-Star Live Stream event. I mean, we've been rocking and rolling for the past three weeks. We want to thank you so much for tuning in and, and sharing your valuable time with us. We know that you could probably be doing, a, be doing a whole bunch of different things, but you've elected to spend time with us in these events and hopefully glean some nuggets that could help you to improve yourself in this time period and also help us all to come out of this, this quarantine or this brief period of isolation a lot better, a lot stronger, and a lot wiser. So with that said, a couple of things we want to do before we get into tonight's training. And I'm excited because we got my, my brother J.R. Fenwick on and of course, Dr. George C. Frazier is here. So what I need you to do is below the video, wherever you are, because you may be on a different platform, but if you're on Facebook, we definitely want you to follow George Frazier's fan page. So I need you to click that button right now to make sure that you get all notifications of what George is doing, what he has coming up. All of the replays are on the fan page. So make sure you like the fan page and make sure you follow the fan page. Next thing I need you to do, hit the share button. Let everybody know that we're live with Dr. George C. Frazier and J.R. Fenwick. And we're gonna talk about some stock market stuff tonight. We're getting a lot of questions about, should I get in, should I not get in? What's the difference between day trading and all of these different types of questions? And hopefully JR will be able to shed some light on those things tonight. The last thing I want you to do is below, tell us where you're from. Go ahead, type in your name. Let me know that you can hear me. Let, let me know that you can hear George. Let me know that you can hear JR. And then let us know where you're from. We've had people uh, chiming in from where? The UK last week, we're from England, Ghana. So all over the world, people are tuning in to this Power Podcast All-Star live stream series. And so we thank you for that. And in that same spot, we'll answer your questions a little bit later. So we're going to get ready to get started. Two more things. If you're over on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so that you'll go ahead and get notified when we upload the videos to YouTube and when we're streaming live there. So we are going across many platforms to make sure that you don't miss anything that Dr. George C. Frazier and the Power Podcast All-Stars have to share with you. So without further delay, I'm going to turn you over to the man of the hour, the man who has written six best-selling books on networking, connecting the dots. And that's essentially what we're doing right now. We're connecting the dots and hopefully we're building lasting, loving relationships. And so without further delay, I turn you over to none other than Dr. George C. Frazier. Thank you, Brother Bedford. I want to start with this. Now, you might not be able to see it but it's a chart and on the headline of the chart, it says white household wealth is 20 times of blacks and Hispanics. That's what it says. And then it shows a chart here. It shows a graph line of the $125 trillion of household wealth in America. White people control $110 trillion of that wealth. Black people who are down here, a, a red line and going down, we control about two trillion dollars of that wealth. So there is a huge gap. This is between 1989 and 2019. Okay, so we have some work to do. There's an interesting study, uh, Melody Hobson of Aerial Capital, uh, who's a co-CEO of that with John Rogers, are both, both of them are incredible human beings. They did a major study on the, on the difference and percentage of white folks involved in uh, the stock market and black people uh, involved in the stock market. About 86% of, of white folks uh, with uh, income of $50,000 or more is invested in stocks and bonds uh, and black people are around 67%, which is a significant increase over the last five or six year reporting period. Hispanics are about 47%, but there's still a 20 percentage point gap between white folks investing and black folks investing. As you know, I've talked to you about building the seven streams of income. There should not be a Negro in America with a single stream of income, right? And those seven streams of income that you need to look at and uh, find ways to develop um, 
in, in the, each stream is first earned, earned income, which is income from working on a job. The next is profit income, income from buying and selling. The next is interest income, income from lending money. Next is dividend income. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. And that is income from owning stocks. Then is rental income, income from renting a house or homes, capital gains income, assets that are increasing in values, houses and not cars, and royalty income, income from others using your idea. When I measured what streams of income I have uh, in my life at this moment in time, I qualify for all seven. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. So we have some work to do. And with that tonight is a brother who is a part of the Power Networking Conference, has been an instructor, one of our tenured uh, faculty members uh, for many years, uh, J.R. Finwick. J.R. and I go, go back a long, long way, at least 25 years. Uh, he might tell you the story and how we met, but, but <laughs> yeah. is what um, Dr. Uh, Amos Wilson said in 1994. He said, and I quote, our refusal as black people to confront the issue of money uh, and wealth is going to end up with our very lives being threatened as a people on this earth. He is exactly right. Again, to address this very hot issue, it's a hot issue right now. There was an interesting article on the 12, I'm sorry, the 10 best ways to earn money during a pandemic. And of course, one of the top ways was in the stock market. All right now mm -hmm. to coach us through this, to train us through this. Remember, we only have an hour. This is about J.R. Finwick. It's not about me. Um, uh, J.R. has written books on this stuff. He's committed a significant part of his life to understanding uh, the, the machinations of and the art and science of investing in stocks. He teaches people how to do that. Um, and so we're going to spend most of the time and sort of extracting that information out, out of, of, out of uh, JR. But remember, he has a lifetime of work um, and there's only so much that he can do uh, in, uh, in 60 minutes. But let me just give you a little bit about JR. He's a fascinating brother. Uh, and I'm just gonna read a little bit from his bio so I can get it right and give you some perspective. JR Finwick is the founder and CEO of Flip That Stock and Hold That Stock. Um, an education and technology company that specializes in teaching beginners how the stock market works and how to make money flipping and holding stocks using their laptop, tablet, and smartphone. JR graduated from Hampton University with a degree in nursing and pre-med at the urging of his father, who was a doctor, and his mother, who was a nurse who just recently passed. After graduating, he went on to uh, work in a hospital as a registered nurse, a male nurse. He did that for about a year, and then not wanting to go in, uh, on to medical school, uh, he later entered uh, into corporate America, taking on various positions in sales and marketing, in pharmaceutical sales, medical equipment, diagnostic industries, etc. However, his true passion was being an entrepreneur. And so while at his corporate job, JR began taking each of his passions, including recording and producing music and martial arts and coaching and marketing, and turning them into profitable little businesses or hustles, if we like, that's how we like to say it, uh, uh, that combined and surpassed his six figure corporate salary. And then he quit his $100,000 a year job. He went on to write an award-winning book, talk about an enterprising brother, on how I quit my $100,000 a year job to inspire and to motivate and to educate others on how to turn their passions into profits. Uh, he even launched a TV show uh, and uh, that was called uh, uh, the Kick Your Boss to the Curb Show. Uh, and he became a featured <laughs> speaker at many entrepreneurial conferences on the topic of turning your passions into profit. We are extraordinarily pleased uh, to have with us uh, for this hour, for this all-star podcast, none other than J.R. Finwick. J.R. Uh, hey, how you doing, George? How are you doing? 
Good, good, uh, good, 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 good. Um, let me let me just begin with a sort of a simple question, okay. and that is, how did you become fundamentally um, interested in and involved in the stock market? I mean, you were mm -hmm. a registered nurse. You were in the medical profession. What prodded you? Yeah, so so initially I was going to go uh, go on to become a, a doctor, uh, like my father. But once I started working in the hospital, it really wasn't my passion. And so I ended up leaving uh, the hospital and I got a job in pharmaceutical sales. And I started taking my bonus checks from my pharmaceutical uh, sale job to build and open a recording studio, which was really my passion. My passion was music. I've been playing guitar since uh, uh, age seven. And I wanted to be a professional musician. And uh, my father was like, I'm not paying for that. You can go to LA, uh, you know, New York. I'm not going to pay for you to go to school for that. He's like, you got to go into one of these fields, nursing, medicine, uh, law, teaching like that. And so um, I left the hospital. I got this pharmaceutical sales job. I start to build this recording studio. And along the way, I ended up meeting a guy. I was buying a, a uh, piece of music equipment. from, And... Um, we hit it off tremendously, like we had been knowing each other our whole life. And literally about two years after I met him, George, out of the clear blue, he just says, hey, man, you trade in the stock market. I'm like, I don't trade in the stock market. I don't know anything about the stock market. And I'm not interested in the stock market. I got the studio going. At that time, I had the book going. Um, I'm like, I'm not interested in the stock market. And to this brother's credit, for the next two years, he hounded me to death about the stock market. Everything flows through the stock market. You can't be a real businessman if you don't know how the stock market works. You got to get in the game. You're being left out. Get off the sideline. I mean, just on and on and on. For two years, his brother would beat me down. And what he was saying was making sense. And so the final straw was when we were going to a Super Bowl party. And um, he was going to ride with me. So he, he uh, came to my house. And we're walking out the door. And before we left, he pulled these two envelopes out of his bag and put them on his table and said, open them. They're business size envelopes. He didn't tell me what was in them. And I opened them. And it was like a, a bank statement. And I was like, why is he showing me his bank statement? Well, it turned out to be his stock market portfolio, which was valued at over a million dollars at the time. And I'm sitting there looking stunned. And he looked me straight in the face and he said, you want to learn now? This is after two years of a beatdown. And then he does this. So I go to the, uh, the uh, Super Bowl party. I can't remember who played. I don't remember what the score was. I just remember that there was um, a pool table and one of these old fashioned big box TVs. And I just kept pacing back and forth in front of the pool table. Like, I'm going to learn this stock market. And uh, I think you know me well enough, George, that when I put my mind on something, you better get out my way. I'm going to learn this stock market thing. So that's how I got started. I started learning from him. I started taking courses. I started going to seminars. I started investing in myself to the point where I even hired a personal coach. And once I got in and I saw how the stock market thing worked, I became obsessed, fascinated with it. I was just like, I can't believe that there's an opportunity Notice I said the opportunity, not a guarantee, but there's an opportunity to make money doing this. I was like, this is, this is, it's been, and that was um, almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, and here we sit today. And the interesting thing is I got so deep in the stock market and so fascinated that my friend who introduced me to it, I'm now his coach. Um, wow. And so the student has become the teacher. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's, that's how myth. I got in it. What are some of the myths about the stock market? Yeah, there's plenty of them, and a lot of them keep us out of the stock market. So one of them right off the gate is, well, you got to be rich. That's, that's a rich people's game, right? But I want you to, to, to think about this and the viewers of tonight's uh, podcast. Maybe people got rich by being in the stock market. Let me show you a pattern here. Let's take this guy named um, Steve Jobs, who started Apple, started in his garage, with Steve Wozniak, Wozniak and a couple other people. They started this company called Apple. They started growing and growing. They needed to uh, make more money. 
So they went from being a privately held company to a publicly held company, meaning selling uh, pieces of their company to the public. And that's how they got their wealth. Entrepreneurship, stock market. Let's look at a guy named uh, Bill Gates. Started in his garage, Microsoft. Started blowing up, blowing up, went from a privately held company to a publicly held company and his ownership of stock in his company. Entrepreneurship, stock market. One more example, guy by the name of Jeff Bezos of this little tiny company most people never heard of called Amazon, right? The richest person in the world. Well, he's not rich because of his salary he gets paid. I'm sure he gets paid a handful, but he's the wealthiest guy because of his stock ownership in his company. So he didn't start off that way. It built up over time. And so you don't have to be rich. Uh, some people say it's gambling. I can tell immediately. As soon as somebody says it's gambling, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, it's too complicated. Uh, you got to be white. It's an old white guy thing. Uh, what else is on there? Uh, you need some type of special degree or certificate or license. You don't need any of this stuff to get started in the stock market. All of this is garbage. It's all crap. Um, you got to have a financial planner or you have to have a broker in order to start. No, you don't. So we got to get rid of those myths, get them out the way, stop using them as excuses. You have somebody who's been in this game and I'm, I'm here to let you know, you don't have, these are all myths. We got to get them out the way so we can get in the game. So yeah. um, today with the stock market being down, mm -hmm. of course it's been up <laughs> for mm -hmm. a long period of time. Uh, some people, some people may perceive this as, as just too risky at this moment in time. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts are, yeah, absolutely. It's risky if you don't know what you're doing. But guess what? If you go out and get in your car and try and drive it and never took an educational course on it and had a mentor to show you how to drive, guess what that is? That's risky too, right? right? Trying to walk across a busy street and you don't know how the signals work is risky. So I tell those folks who say it's risky, well, think about this. Why are 90 plus percent of wealthy people in the stock market in some way, shape or form, if it's so risky, maybe they know something we don't know. And maybe mm -hmm. there's just a huge opportunity waiting for us. So we got to get out of that mindset. It's too risky. Um, there is risk, but you got to take calculated risk. And how do you take calculated risk? You get educated and then you go and you look to take advantage of the opportunities. So we got to stop all that is too risky stuff and really learn the truth about what's going on in the market. Right. Um, was it just some people investing and trading and the difference between yeah. investing and trading? I'm glad you asked that because we hear these terms used interchangeably all the time and they are not the same thing. Hmm. So investing means that you buy and you hold a stock for a longer period of time. So what's a longer period of time? One year or longer. Uh, you're an investor. If you buy shares of a stock and you hold it for one year longer. If you buy shares of stock and sell them over a shorter period of time, that could be months, uh, weeks, days, uh, hours, minutes, even seconds, you're a trader. There is no law that says when you buy shares of a stock, you have to hold it for a certain period of time. And so that is the difference. And you need to know the difference between investing and trading because you use different strategies. You use totally different strategies mm -hmm. when you're an investor and you're a trader. Investor, they say, hey, I wanna know what the company does. I wanna know what their profits are. I wanna know what their products are. I wanna know what their expenses are. I wanna know what their you know, quarterly uh, earnings are. Traders, we don't care nothing about that. 99.5% of the companies that I flip and trade, I literally have absolutely no idea what they do. And I don't care because we're in it for a short period of time. But when I'm investing, oh, I want to know what that company does. I want to know where they're going and what's happening. And so that's, that's very key to know the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. um, what's the key? This is the magic question here. What is the key to making money in the stock market? You know, that is the, that's, that's the million dollar question. And I'm here to tell you, after being in the stock market in some way, shape, or form for 20 years, and now having flipped that stock going into its seventh year, the key to making money in the stock market, number one, is to get educated. Get educated. Number two is to identify what your goals are. What are you trying to do? Your goal might be different than mine, and it might be different than um, 
Brother Bedford's. So we got to get educated. Then we got to de determine what our goals are. And then we have to find a system that we can follow in order to achieve our goal. Okay. So right. how do you, how do you get educated? I mean, that's an important word. How do you, what's the best way a novice mm -hmm. to get, to begin the process of getting educated? Because I, I believe in the foundation. Mm -hmm. I got good and bad news. So here's the good news. The good news is if we started right now and just started going on YouTube and Amazon and looking at re, uh, ordering books and looking at videos so we could literally spend the rest of our life and never run out of educational information on the stock. So that's the good news. The bad news is, is that there's so much information out here. It's information overload, right? And, and people, I get people every day who said, I bought this book on how dummies, how to do this, or I, I, I watched this YouTube video and they're like, Jay, I'm more confused than before. And so the thing is you have to find somebody who can take this so-called complicated information and break it down into something that you will understand and something that you can take baby steps and start at a beginner, but become more advanced. And that's what we specialize here at flip that stock and hold that stock. We specialize in teaching beginners who have little knowledge or no knowledge. We're going to take them from that to being active traders, investors, knowing how to find stocks, analyze them, go in there and buy them, protect themselves, monitor them. And that's what we love doing. But that's the key. Um, and people, they want to skip over that a lot of times, right? It doesn't work. And I'll give you a quick example, George. Suppose I know you fly a lot and before the pandemic, and, and I do as well. Suppose you're sitting in the waiting area, and I'm, your, and I'm uh, the, the pilot, and I'm walking by, and I say, hey, everybody, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Captain Fenwick. I'll be your pilot today, and we'll be boarding shortly. And you say, hey, hey, uh, uh, Captain Fenwick, you know, uh, my son or my grandson always wanted to be a pilot. Where did you go to school? And I say, I didn't. And you say, well, where did you train and practice to fly planes. I say, I didn't. But ever since I was little, I always wanted to fly this plane. You guys are going to be my first passengers. But I never got educated. I never practiced it. Practice, but just get on my plane. You don't get on that plane? Who would get on the plane? You can look at any profession. You can't skip over. Learn it. Practice it. Then do it. You can't skip it and have long-term success. And that is the key to making money in the stock market. Yeah. What is your strategy, your personal strategy? I don't know if that's a personal question in the world of, of the stock market, but you, do you have a personal strategy or formula that yes. you apply to both your investment strategy uh, and your mm -hmm. trading strategy? And, and what would you say on a, on, a, on a scale of 100, what percentage mm -hmm. of that would be in, in quote investing and what percentage mm -hmm. would be trading? That's a great question. I've actually never been asked that question. But the answer is, I actually started off as a trader, meaning I was fascinated by having the skill set to go into the stock market, buy a stock, and have the potential to make money and get out. I actually used to call the stock market my little ATM, where I could just go in and I would use the volatility, the movement, the quick movement of the stock market to get in and get out. And I loved it. I loved having the skill set. I loved being able to strategize and go in there. So I started off with flipping. And then I got into more holding and investing. And to be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as flipping. But I really started enjoying it because there's something about being able to go in and, and invest in a company and say you have ownership in that company, right? Check this out, George. If you go into, let's say, and I'm just using Apple as an example. I'm not recommending Apple. I'm just using it as an example. But I know a lot of people have iPhones. Who do you think feels better? The guy who's just walking in and can't wait to get the next iPhone, plutonium, XZ1, 300, or say me who walks into Apple and I want that same phone but I'm one of the owners in Apple. I literally can say, if somebody says, well, what do you do? I can say, yeah, I'm one of the owners of Apple. Most people, uh, and in particular, our people are going to say, yeah, he's talking about he's one of the owners. He's full of crap. No, but if you own one share, just one share of a company, legally, you're one of the owners. 
So I like that power. I like being able to say I have ownership in this, or I'm looking to buy ownership in that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a shopaholic. I shop for companies that I can own versus just being a consumer, right? And, and, and for lack of a better phrase, that excites me. So I get equally excited now by holding and flipping. Um, I'm still more a little bit of a flipper compared to a holder uh, because I do like having that skill set, but I, I like them both. I like them both. You can do them both. You don't have to be stuck with one or the other. Right. Yeah. Um, you have your own trading account. You act as your own broker, so to speak, yes. right? You don't, you don't have to have a license for that, do you? No. No, so let me clear, yeah, let me clear that up, all right, so that everybody understands this. Because somebody was saying the other day, I heard JR say you don't need a broker. No. Back in the day, you could just call a company up, Coca-Cola, and say, I'd like to buy shares or stock in you. And you could go down to Coca-Cola and take your money and give you a certificate. And you walk away with that piece of paper right. and you have ownership. Well, technology has changed all that. You don't have to do that. Um, so then it went from that to you could call on the phone a personal broker and say, hey, Mr. Broker, I want you to buy me 100 shares of Coca-Cola. And right. that person would carry that order. Then technology advanced where we can just go on our laptops and use software or use apps to buy through a brokerage firm. Brokerage firm being, and I'm not recommending these, I'm just throwing them out here. Fidelity, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Scott Trade, E-Trade, we've, we've heard of all so these brokerage firms, they go out and they get shares of stock, right? Uh, from all these different companies, and then they offer them to their customers. So you wanna have a brokerage account. Oops, let me fix this right here. You wanna have a brokerage account, but you don't need a broker, a stock broker, an individual person to buy shares of stock. You don't need to pay somebody to do something you can do yourself. I always tell people, if you pay a stockbroker and they lose your money or a financial planner and they lose your money, you lost twice because you just paid somebody to lose your money. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they'll say the same thing. Yeah, you know, the market just didn't do what we thought it was going to do. Hey, really? But this is stuff we can do ourselves when we take the time to get educated. You know, it is not hard. There are a lot of pieces, just like there are a lot of pieces in your car that you have to learn how to do steering wheel and all this. But once you learn them, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And I love the aspect of having the knowledge and the skill set to go shopping every day for opportunity. And I'm gonna tell you and the whole listening audience, there has never in the history of this world been a better time than right now with what's going on in the market crashing than to learn how the stock market works and you're sitting at home quarantine or stay at home orders, why don't you take some of that time and learn the stock market rather than just look at binge watch TV shows? This is the best time. And when this thing turns around, and I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do believe they will get the coronavirus under control. And when it gets under control, that stock market, in my opinion, is going to go crazy. So we have this unprecedented time where you're being forced to stay at home and nobody's gonna be able to see what you're doing while you're at home and it's another quick point uh and I, I start getting a little excited here so you might see me jump up and start shouting but the stock market is one of the few things that they cannot discriminate against you with now let me what do you mean by that jr well george let's say that you had a, a house that you were selling and you wanted five hundred thousand. And let's say I had 500,000 cash sitting in my, I said, George, I'll pay you 500 cash tomorrow. You could say, I'm not going to sell it to you because you're black. You could do that. Not supposed to do that, but you could. And you could make up some other excuse as to why you want to sell it. But when you're buying in the stock market, that laptop, your smartphone, your tablet, it doesn't know what color you are. It doesn't care. You put your order in, you place your order. It can't stop you because of your race, your color, your religion, your creed. It can't stop you. This is a beautiful thing about the stock market. And these are little nuances that most people don't understand and never thought about. They're letting all this other stuff hold them back. It's too risky. Well, I got to have a degree. Get educated and find out what you really need. 
and what opportunities are available. And you'll be shocked at the opportunities that are there. So, so what, do you, um, what do you look for? Did you, were you on, were you doing any day trading today? No, not today. Uh, today is Saturday. So, so the oh, stock market is only right, open right. on Monday through Friday, right? It's closed right. on the weekend. Yeah. Did you do some day trading this week? Uh, this week, yeah, I did. Okay. And, and, let, and, let, and let me walk, explain walk us to, through, walk us okay. through what you did. Okay. So let me first explain, and I'm sorry, my camera, it's on a stand, it looks like it's going to keep falling, but let me first explain what is a day trade. Okay, because people hear the term, what is day trading? I want to be a day trader, right? So remember the difference between investing and trading. Investor, they buy the stock, they hold it for longer term, one year or longer. There are many different types of traders. Uh, you could have a swing trader, which means I buy a stock, I hold it for a few weeks to uh, uh, maybe a couple months. But a day trader is somebody who looks for an opportunity with a stock, goes in, and they're looking for stocks that are volatile. All right. Um, you know, if you're in the hospital and they call a code red and you hear that, that beep, that means a person flatline, right? That means they're dead. Well, if you buy a stock and it's flatline, you can't make any money. If you buy a stock for $10 and every day it's $10, $10, you're not going to make any money. It's got to do something. It's got to move, right? So we, we have a whole system of how we find volatile stocks that move up and down quickly in a short period of time. And we go in there and we will look to uh, at, at a basket of stocks. We have a whole system where we, we go through the stocks and we look at each individual. There's thousands, thousands and thousands of stocks. So we use a certain type of screener that already has a formula in it, all right? And it will literally within a matter of seconds screen all these stocks and boom, drop them in a basket. Just like if you go to Amazon, and you say you want some shoes, you don't get millions of shoes they show. But if you say I want size 12, Nike, black, under 200 bucks, now it's going to whittle that down mm -hmm. and give you a smaller basket. We do the same thing with the stock market. Then we look at each individual one for certain patterns and characteristics. And then we're looking to go in and let's say that you have a stock that's uh, $5. Right, stocks come in all different prices or sizes, right? And so it's $5 a share, which is a share just means a slice, a piece of ownership in a company. So let's say it's $5. And let's say that you buy 100 shares of that stock, right? Now I'm talking about flipping, day trading. And let's say that our research and signals show that on average, this stock has the potential, not the guarantee, maybe to go up two bucks. So if we get 100 shares of that stock, and if it goes up, uh, if it goes up a dollar, right, from five dollars to six dollars, you've made a hundred dollars. If it goes up two dollars, you've made two hundred dollars, right? And we do this in a short period of time. I'm talking about usually 15, 20 minutes, maximum an hour. So I've developed a six step system where I teach, take people from knowing nothing. And you ain't got to know nothing. Matter of fact, we prefer you don't know anything so you don't bring a bunch of baggage with you and we can show you step by step by step how to do this, how to use the software, how to find these stocks and how to go in and actually buy them and get out. So that's what day traders do. It could be $50, it could be 1000 it could be 5000 I mean, this is something on Wall Street they've been doing for centuries. But people you don't trading, know it. Do you, you trade in penny stocks? Do you Yes, I've traded penny stocks before, and Explain let me tell that. people. Explain that to the audience. Okay. What penny okay. stock? So first and foremost, people think a penny stock means that the stock is pennies, okay? And a penny stock can be pennies, but the technical definition of a penny stock is any stock that's five dollars or less. Mm -hmm. That is called a penny stock, okay? Now you got to be careful with penny stocks. Because a lot of these companies that are penny stocks yeah. are garbage. They're, right. they're, they're, they're shell companies. They're running games. There's something, there's something called a uh, 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 pump and dump. right? And a pump and dump is where, let's say we get together, me, you, and Brother Bedford. And we start a company. And then we hire a marketing company. And we say, we got this contract to put this widget inside of an iPhone. 
And as that iPhone blows up, we're going to blow up with it. And we're going to, you know, we're going to offer our stock for one penny. We get everybody all excited, all excited. And we give ourselves a million shares each worth one penny. But we want to get that stock up to a dollar and then cash it out. So we pump it, then we dump it, we get our million and we get out. Everybody else is hopping in and hopping in, all excited at $1 saying it's going to go to $100. And then the stock just crashes. So they call that a pump and dump in the penny stock market. So you've got to be careful and really know how to go in and find these stocks, know when to get in, when to get out, and, and, and how to take advantage of it, uh, and also how to minimize uh, your losses. Mm-hmm. But, um, to me, it really doesn't matter like the price of the stock. I mean, I like lower price stocks because I can get you know, more shares of them. But the system that we use is the same. The same six steps we use on a penny stock as we use on a higher price stock. All right, mm-hmm. we just follow the same formula. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the number one reason people lose money in the stock market? This is, this is actually might surprise people. The number one reason people lose money in the stock market because they focus on the money. They focus. I just want to, you know, and I, I see this all the time. They sign up and flip that stock right now. I just want to get you that money. Yeah, I saw you flip this stock, right? I have a video where I flipped the stock. I made $500 in 47 seconds from home, sitting at my aisle. And it's, I just want to do that. I just want to do it. But you're negating the fact that I learn, I practice, and then I do it. And so the number one mistake people make is they come in focused on the money. Don't focus on the money. Focus on the education. Focus on the system. Because that's what gets you to the money. If you got in your car and all you said, I want to drive, I want to drive, I want to drive, I want to get to the park to hang out with my friends, but you don't know how the steering wheel works, it doesn't work. Focus on learning, practicing, then doing. So that's the number one mistake people make. Is I know there's some money in the stock market, I'm going to get it. That's the wrong way to go about it. And you're setting yourself up for failure. Even if you get lucky, you're setting yourself up for failure. Right. You can get into the stock market for as little as 100 bucks, right? I mean, at the end of it. Yeah, you can get in the stock market for 20 bucks. You can get in the stock market for 10 bucks. Now, how many shares of stock you're going to be able to get varies on what the price of the stock is. But I'm going to tell you, out of the big three, what are the big three? All right, these are the three things that have proven to build wealth over time. You preach this every day, George. Real estate, uh, stock market, business ownership. Right? Right. Not in any particular order. But the lowest barrier of entry Right, to get into real estate, and please don't all the real estate folks come at me because I believe in real estate and I'm in some real estate, so don't come. All I'm saying is it takes a little bit more effort and energy to, to start flipping homes and yeah. investing homes. So a stock market, man, you can you open can't up. You can get account. into real estate for a hundred dollars. I mean, it, <laughs> I, I don't know anybody who's got into it, you yeah. know, I, it, it, it might be kind of tough, but you get in the stock market for a hundred dollars, yeah. and that hundred dollars could explode into thousands. Yeah, it, it really could. Not a guarantee. And I always say that we, we can't give guarantees. We're looking for opportunity. But the, the, the lowest barrier of entry out of the three big, big ones, real estate, business ownership, and stock market, we all know how much money and energy it takes to run a business. Right. Lowest barrier of entry is a stock market. And George, that's the biggest slice of the pie that we as African-Americans aren't taking advantage of. Right. That, that's the crazy part. And, no, and, and think about this. No, whoa, whoa. Let me say this. How hard is it to do real estate right now? I'm not saying that you can't do it. It's just a little bit more difficult to do it, right? It's a little bit more difficult to start a business right now. But you can sit at home and learn the stock market and be sitting in your home in quarantine, looking out the window at your backyard and looking for, to shop for opportunities in the stock market. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you learned in your years in the stock market uh, that would shock people? Oh, you already said it. No, I haven't said it. I haven't said it yet, but I'm going to say it now. Are you sitting down? I am. Because this is one that blew my mind when I found this out. All right. We all understand the concept of buy low, sell high. Buy a house for 200000 Hey, you know, five, 10 years later, hopefully you can sell it for you know, 500,000, right? Buy low, sell high. Same concept with the stock market. Buy low, sell high. But what I found out in the stock market that's unlike anything else is that, 
let's say you got a stock and you got it at $10 and it went up to $20, right? How happy are you? Bought it low, it went up you know, to $20 you per share. Money. You You're making money. money. But what if I told your listening audience, you could get a stock at $20 and if it went down to $10, you could make money as it goes down. Yeah. So as traders, we don't care which way the stock is going because we're making, we can make money when it goes up and when it goes down. And it's actually, to me, a little easier to make money as the stock is going down. Now, we've got, you know, only an hour. Is, so that, I, is I, that called shorting? Shorting? That's called, that's called shorting a stock. And, and, and we don't have time to go into all the steps of how to do it. But just know this. Every time, I want you all to look at my face. Every time you turn on that news and you hear that stock market is crashing, there's somebody behind the curtain saying, crash, baby, crash, because they understand how shorting works, they have a technique in place, and they know how to take advantage of it. So just because the stock market crashed does not mean everybody's losing their money, all right? There's a lot of people who are popping champagne bottles and balloons behind curtains. They don't want to come out in public and do it because who wants to come out with the coronavirus and all this? But behind closed doors, they're like, ooh. So when you learn how to do both of these techniques, Oh man, you don't care which way the market's going. You have an opportunity to make money and build uh, income, finances, and wealth possibly. Um, what should people um, do who, who want to get started in buying and, and selling stocks for themselves? What should they do? What, what would be step right. one, two, three? Okay, so, so the, the, the first step is um, you got to change your mindset. You have to say, number one, I'm getting in this game. I'm not letting any of this nonsense uh, that we talked about, the myths, I'm not holding that back. All right, that's number one, all right? And people, they're, they're probably looking for something different, but I'm telling you the truth. Number one, you got to change your mindset and declare I'm getting in the game and that I can do this. I didn't have any background in finance. I never took an accounting course, a business course at Hampton. I took nursing pre-med, but guess what? Hampton's a school that calls me to come back and teach the students the stock market. So number one, change your mindset. Number two, open that wallet up and say, I'm going to invest in myself. That's the best investment you can make far beyond the stock. So I'm going to invest in myself. And then number three is I'm going to find a good educational course that specializes in teaching beginners. Why? Because I can't tell you how many people come to me saying, I spent all this money thousands of dollars, thousands, seven, 10, 15,000. Say, I don't even understand what's going on. They, the level they talk so high, the language they use, it, it's too much. So number one, mindset. Number two, say I'm going to invest in myself. And number three, find a company that specializes in beginners and can walk you through, not only through video, but through um, demonstration. What I mean by that? Can watch videos all day long but can we take you into the market and demonstrate what we just taught you on the video right so a lot of people may or may not know i have a black belt in martial arts so what does that got to do with anything well what if i went and my instructor sat me in his living room and said we're just gonna watch videos we're gonna watch videos of these techniques and this that ain't gonna work you know, watch the video and then go and demonstrate it and work on it so that's what you want. Change your mind. Uh, commit to investing in yourself. And then number three is find a good quality uh, educational company that specializes in beginners. Okay? Those are three steps. Are there any companies like that? I think I might know one. I heard one that's like taking over the country. Something <laughs> flip, flip that, flip that stock. Flip that stock. Yeah. I heard about this company and, 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 and I want to be part of it. I'm pretty you know, excited I know, about it. I know you crisscross the world and certainly the country doing this, teaching this, and you mm -hmm. are a master at it. Mm -hmm. um, is it um, uh, a prescribed place, time? Uh, how, how do people find you? How do, how do they get into a class like that? Yeah, so, so we post things on our website uh, and we have a What's the new website. website. We just launched a new website. I actually printed it out here. I don't know if it'd be backward, but it's called flipthatstockevents.com. Mm. It's like it's backwards, but flipthatstockevents.com. 
No. And what we're doing is we're posting upcoming live seminars, which obviously we're not doing right now, our webinars. If, you're, if, if the viewers of this podcast go there now, we have a video called the coronavirus and the stock market. You got to see it. Okay. Go there, put your information in, and, it, and they'll send you an email with a, a link to click and watch that video immediately. And it's going to show you some interesting things about you know, how the coronavirus is affecting everything and how we can take advantage of that. Not in a negative or bad way. And let me, let me explain what I mean by that. Years ago, uh, and George, you know this, um, I have a custom built house and in 2007, our house burnt down. And so all these companies started calling me and saying they wanted to rebuild the house. And it was one of the most stressful times of my life. And I thought people were trying to rip me off because they just wanted money to rebuild my house. But then I realized, wait, I need these companies. These companies are doing me a service by rebuilding you know, my home. And they deserve to get paid for it. So my whole mindset uh, set shifted, right? So now, what does that got to do with this? Because you have to have a mindset. Don't go in here like, oh, you know, it's wrong to make money because of the coronavirus. No, some pharmaceutical company is probably going to come out with a cure. And why shouldn't you invest in that company? That helps that company grow, right? So you have to have that mindset. We're looking for opportunities. And I talk about this in detail on, uh, on the webinar that I did, the video I did, that people can go to flipthestockevents.com. And, and just put your name in and you get instant access through an email that's sent to you. Don't do it right I, now, I also, though. Go ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I wait, also wait, think... Wait, 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 wait till we get done with the presentation. <laughs> then y'all go over to flipthatstockevents.com. Right. But right now, right. stay tuned for a few more minutes. Go ahead. Stay George, focused. Question. Stay focused. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to oh, drop I some more. I have it. When I get, the, get daily newspaper, uh -huh. I read the front page, mm -hmm. and then I go to the business page. I don't go to the sports page. That's last. Mm -hmm. I go to the business page. So mm -hmm. I was reading in the Wall Street Journal not long ago. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not saying anything anybody hasn't heard probably. The Johnson & Johnson is getting ready to invest $2 billion to come up with a cure for the coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to take mm -hmm. them a year or so. And I thought to me, mm, that sounds like probably a good stock to invest in. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yes and no. All right. And let me tell you why. We don't know how much uh, Johnson & Johnson costs per share. For example, let's, let's pretend like Amazon. Just, I'm just throwing this out there. This is not true. I'm making it up, but I just want for purposes of an example. Let's say Amazon said we're going to invest $2 billion in finding a cure for coronavirus. And everybody says, well, you better go get some Amazon stock. But Amazon cost, I, I believe, last check, almost $2,000 a share. Oh, right, right. How many, so, so we got to know more than just, oh, they're working on a cure for it. We got to know more factors. We got to know, you know, um, how much do they cost? We want to know how much volume they're doing. What does volume mean? That means how many shares are being bought uh, per day, right? We don't want low volume stocks. Um, there's a lot more variables in there, but you're on the right path, right? George, I pulled up, uh, and I have it right here on my computer, industries hit hardest by the coronavirus, right? And I'm just going to read them real quickly, all right? And then I'm going to make a point. Gambling, much of the nation's $261 billion casino industry has been basically shut down. Uh, airlines, we all know they've been shut down. Uh, hotels have been shut down. Movie Disney, theaters. Disney. 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 Oh, oh, entertainment, live sports, cruises, shipping has been shut down, film production, automakers, oil and gas, retail, tech, uh, conventions, right? Food service, theme parks, gyms, construction, transportation. These are all industries that have been decimated almost mm -hmm. by um, the coronavirus, right? So let's go from a we call an inverted triangle, a wide base and come down. So let's mm -hmm. take an industry, right? Let's say Disney, all right? So we say entertainment, then under entertainment, we say Disney. And I don't know what Disney stock is, 
but it's probably gone down, right? So now we look and we say, is Disney going to turn around? And will people go back to Disney and flood Disney like they did before once they get control of this virus? I think they will. I don't have yeah. a crystal ball, but I think they will. So if Disney is on sale, and who doesn't like sales, and let's say it's on sale by 30% off. Again, I don't know what it costs or what it is. I'm, just, I'm going through a formula in my head. I, I'm, really what I'm teaching your listeners is a, a thought process, right? Then I look at Disney and say, what does it cost? What is the likelihood of a turnaround? And then do I want to get in? But also you have to know how to purchase correctly, right? There's a lot of stuff people don't know. You say, I'm going to go out and just buy the stock. I'll just open up an account. What type of account are you going to open up? There's like 200 brokers out there. Brokers firm. They vary. Which one do you open up? When you buy a stock, there's a certain way you buy it. After you buy it, there's a certain way you protect yourself. So people get excited. I hear this all the time. They're like, yeah, just give me a stock pick, man. Come on, man. Just give me a stock pick. The worst thing I can do is give them a stock pick, and they don't know nothing else about how the stock market works. Mm. I'm setting them up for failure, and I won't do it. So I want people to think in terms of concepts. But again, you still have to learn all the other things that go mm -hmm. along with it. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's not hard once you get into it. I love it, in case you can't tell. It's fun, it's exciting. And I'll tell you this, George. My coach just uh, told me that the Disney is it's $106.63. Okay, Question I can look at it. Is, uh, is that down? I can tell you right now. Let me see. Down? Walt Disney. I'm going to tell you in a second. Yes. Walt Disney collapsed from 100 and 140. It went as low as $85. And now it's back wow. up to 106. And so now it's 106. Right. right. So there was a spread between 85 and 106 in a relatively short period of time. Had yeah, you bought it at 85, mm -hmm. right? And it's now yep. 106, it's probably going to continue to rise over time. So Could. there's, there's yeah. And there's more factors with Disney that's going on too. Disney is getting into the streaming game. And so right. now they'll be competing with Netflix. So there's a lot of variables, but check it out. If I just said, hey, go on, everybody go out and get Disney, well, some people are going to say, that's $106 a share. How many shares can I get? There may be a stock that's lower that I could get that has the same potential as Disney, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't understand the steps, right? So again, this is everybody we want to skip. We want to skip the education part. It's tough to do that. You can get lucky, you know. I, I met one lady at an um, event, and, and, and all they did was just introduce me and tell what I did. And this lady came running up to me after. She said, God, I wish I had met you three months ago. I hear this all the time. But this is the craziest story thus far. She said, I put some money in the market. Georgia went up to $100,000. She went to work one day, looked at her portfolio. It was down at $30,000. She lost $70,000 in a day. And I could have showed her one simple technique that would have locked in her profits and protected. And wow. she said, I, I never heard of it. I even know anything about this. So, see, so it's not just about, oh, I get in and it goes up. Well, what if it goes up and turns around? Let's say you got in Disney at, uh, at 80. Let's say that thing shot up to 300 and you didn't know how to protect yourself and it goes down to 15 bucks. That can happen, right? So you got to know how to place the correct order and how to protect yourself when you're in this. And there's different strategies that we teach people. Um, when you start with us, you ain't going to be a beginner for long. We're going to take you from beginner to novice to advanced. And you're going to be speaking a whole new language. Um, and that's the fun part of it, too, is that, you know, people start, you know, we like to show off. You know, we're like, yeah, I was looking at Disney uh, and, and, and I went ahead, I, I got this and I did this and I, I used this strategy on it. You know, we start showing off a little bit. And, and it's well, a beautiful you, thing. We know that we have arrived when we are bragging about our st stock investments instead of our a new purchase of a Lexus. Oh, right? come on. <laughs> how, how about how, how, yeah. Yeah. How, how about this? How about we say, um, I got a new Lexus, but I paid for it through the 
proceeds from my stock. See, that's 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 a whole different ball game right there. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we ought to be we ought to be bragging about our stock. Yes, that's great, George. Here, here's what I want to do. What we want to do right now. I know we got several people chiming in with questions. Here's what I want you to do. We're not going to be able to get to all of your questions, but go ahead and type in your question now. We have a couple of people try to look at the questions and see if you know two or three of you are asking the same question, and then we'll put those before you. So while you're typing in your questions, just a couple of things that I want to remind you of. Make sure you follow this page here at George Frazier's fan page so that you can be notified of everything that's coming up. Also, go to New Black power.com. Therefore, you'll be notified for all of the upcoming events that we have. Plus, I'll give you access to the past events. So therefore, you won't miss any of these power podcasts. Okay. And then I also, JR, could you give your website again one more time so we make sure that that's in the feed for them? Yeah, sure. So it's uh, flip that stock events with a S events.com. Flip that stock events.com. Great, because I just don't want to interrupt these questions as they come in. And one last question before we get going, George, can you give us an update on the Power Networking Conference before we get into the questions? Sure. Uh, the Power Networking Conference in Houston, Texas at the Hiltons of America is set. It has been for a year for July 8th through the 11th. Now, asterisk. Um, we will probably, we have not made the final decision because God is in charge. And I ain't talking about Donald Trump, uh, God. I'm talking about God. We don't know. Um, but it, we have a tentative date a little further out, October the 10th. We're going to have a 2020 conference. Mm -hmm. We would love to have it in July when we normally have it. But we do not want to put any brother or sister at risk. So push come to shove. We already have an agreement. Um, uh, for uh, a date that is uh, the week of October the 10th. So that's the latest. We have not firmed it up. Uh, and, and so, you know, every time we do this, we'll give you the latest information. But right now it's still on for July 8th through the 11th at uh, Hilton uh, in uh, Houston, Texas. So that's, that's the latest update. And of course, um, I'll make an offer when all this is done. Go ahead. Okay, great. So the first question, JR, that's coming in, a person asked about Canadian stocks. How does your method or your training work, work with Canadian stocks? So the stock market, irrespective of the asset, meaning whether it's Canadian stocks or US stocks or whatever, the way we teach people our six-step system can be applied to really any asset class where we're looking at certain signals that help us determine, should we get in the stock? Which way is the stock going? Should we try and make money going up or down? So yes, uh, this, the system does uh, can apply to that, but there are different rules and regulations for countries as far as opening up a brokerage account and things like that, all right? So there'd be different rules for that. But once you get an account open, our system can apply to that. Okay, I think you already answered this, but it came across again from Atasha. She wanted to know what is the best way to get started. Um, I, I think you went over that, but maybe you can kind of give her a really a straight answer so that she can kind of absorb what it is that she so, needs to do. Th real quick, three things, make your mind up that you can do this and you're gonna do it. Number two, say, I'm gonna invest in myself. What does that mean? You gotta open up your wallet. And the quickest way to do it is pay somebody to teach you step by step. Because the amount that you would pay somebody is usually a lot less than you trying to figure it out yourself and making mistakes. And then the third thing is find somebody who specializes in teaching beginners, which is what we do. So you can go to flipthatstockevents.com, watch the video that we have on the coronavirus in the stock market. And if you're interested and you like the way I explain things and teach things, I use a lot of analogies, then you know we'll be happy to to, uh, to share with you and, and teach yeah. you. Yeah, you know. Um... One of the richest men in the world is Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. And Warren Buffett watches trends. One of the wisest investors. And of course, he, he's a long-term investor. He's a big investor, mm -hmm. long-term investor. Uh, he invests in companies that have been around as long as cockroaches, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he has just made a fortune from it. 
but he's a very astute, very learned, very studied uh, investor. Uh, he's a good model. Um, and he's not a stockbroker. He'll tell you that in a New York minute. He just studies mm -hmm. trends. He's educated mm -hmm. on it. Uh, he's book smart. Um, he's a critical thinker. Uh, he's intellectually curious about the market. He's in love with it. He's been doing it all of his life. So mm -hmm. getting a, a head start, consider yourself a beginner. I don't care how smart you are, how many degrees you have. Consider yourself a beginner. Get some basic training. But it's the kind of thing that you can absolutely fall in love with, make a fortune mm -hmm. if you're astute and you're smart, you're disciplined and obedient. Mm -hmm. um, and you got a young brother here that is, is, is practiced in that and, um, and is ready, willing, and able to, 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 to teach us that. Uh, is there another question, brother? Yeah, we'll just, go, we'll just go with one more uh, because JR <laughs> has uh, quite a few students who are already in the different chats across the different platforms who are answering questions from everybody else who's asking about the six step process and they're telling them that you teach that in the course. Some people have taken the course last year, said they can't wait, they, now it's time for them to put that investment to use this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go with one more question. Bridget had asked a question and we kind of dealt with this with, um, Pastor Jamal Bryant on the other day too. She asked about how to, let me, let me get her wording correct, is how should we use the $1,200 stimulus check investing <laughs> in the stock market? Now what, we did, now what we did do, JR, the other day with Pastor Jamal Bryant on, Bridget, and just uh -huh. to, to repeat, we asked everyone that if once you get your stimulus money and if you applied and was able to receive any other type of stimulus money to at least make a commitment to invest $200 in a black owned business to kind of make sure that we help stimulate hmm. our own economy. So that still holds true. We wanna make sure that one of the things that you can do is invest in a black owned business. And of course, flip that stock is a black owned business as well. We are. So we'll let yeah. JR give <laughs> more advice on that. Go ahead, JR. All right. So JR, do you have an online, do you have an online course? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think we got memberships all over the country and into Canada. Right. So, you know, it's interesting. Most companies don't make it through a year. Uh, right. George, I remember when I told you I started this, this was almost seven years ago. And now we have members all over the country and into Canada. And so our course is online. And then we do live uh, screen sharing where I'm teaching and showing people in the market, um, you know, uh, everything's online everything's online but we'll start once this once this coronavirus thing gets set i'm all over the country as you know yeah Live seminars meet and greets and things like that we got so much lined up uh there's going to be so much fun with this and we just launched our own social media platform what does that mean i don't mean oh i got a facebook page i do have a facebook page but i don't want all my members on facebook why and this is just a straight up truth because Mark Zuckerberg can get up any day and scratch his forehead and say, I don't like you or what you're doing and shut us down. So we have our own platform set up just like Facebook. You go on there, we can post videos and, and, and articles and everything else all pertaining to the stock market. We have a community uh, uh, atmosphere where we're helping each other grow and share. Just like some of the members are on typing answers into some of the people who are asking these questions, that's what we have with Hold That Stock. So our goal is to build the largest, uh, and George, you know me, when I say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Yes, We're sure. building the, the largest online platform for people of color to learn the market mm -hmm. and become um, uh, traders and investors in the market, active traders and investors. Mm -hmm. We don't need a broker. We don't need a financial planner. We're learning it. We can do it, and we can do it. And so, um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm just excited about all of it. What we have coming, and what we have current. Okay. Is there a special uh, promotional code or discount code you want to offer uh, the uh, fifteen thousand people that we've reached tonight? Is there any special offer yeah. you want to make? Yeah. So what, so what I'm gonna do is for those who go to flipthatstockevents.com and watch the video, right? then I'm, and they're interested in moving forward, I'm gonna give uh, an additional discount code. I'm not even gonna tell people what it is, but it'll be worth their while. I mean, I'll tell you what the code is, but the discount is gonna be worth your while because my goal is to get 
folks started to get folks started all right so what i'll do is i'll have uh one of my programmers put the code together and we'll call the code um we're just going to call it george that's going to be the code there you go since you kicked this off so when people now i'll know whether you watch the video or not because that's going to do a lot of the work and cut out a lot of the questions and then after that um if if you want to use this code to sign up we're going to have special discounts for everybody who watches and, and, and tuned in tonight because somebody's mm -hmm. watching netflix right now and they should they probably should be on this. That, that, yeah, that's Jennifer, uh, generous. Um, now, the, the reason why the word George is such a good promotional code is because George is old Greek for farmer, mm. one who cultivates the soil, right? Mm. So it's a wonderful promotional code. You know, JR, thank you, man. You have always been a servant leader. Uh, you have always been about and for our people. You are a woke and conscious brother. And we really appreciate you sharing um, knowledge with us about this and making sure that we engage in this uh, platform of investing in, in, in America, investing in stocks. Uh, it is potentially one of the most enriching strategies. It's a long-term strategy, wealth building strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. that one can engage in. It's something more of us need to be a part of. And so we, we really want to thank you for giving us a, a great presentation, uh, a great orientation, some insight and uh, some insight into what it takes. But I think fundamentally, you said it, uh, uh, get some education, get some education from someone that knows how to teach our people, because as you know, black people learn differently than white people. Mm -hmm. We're all visual, tactile, kinesthetic, and auditory learners. And uh, we are people of testimony. And, um, and, and you are an African-American owned business. And if you're going to invest some of your uh, 1200 bucks and you're looking to take your investment strategy uh, to the next level, uh, put some money in learning a different um, a different way of or different income stream that you can mm -hmm. add to the six or seven or two or three that you already have. That is a legitimate income stream investment in the stock market. All right, and we need to do more. Absolutely, absolutely. There are and thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to, um, Brother Bedford, do you have any closing words and then I'm gonna make a special offer? Yeah, one one last thing I wanna say again, go to newblackpower.com to get the notifications, but just wanted to make sure that you all were aware. We've had some great powerhouses, uh, Les Brown, Lisa Nichols, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, Anthony Browder, Pastor Jamal Bryant, and then tonight we've had J.R. Fenwick come before you with flipthatstock.com. We have another special guest coming up Tuesday, world-renowned Dr. Julianne Malvo. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we get the word out, let everyone know that Julianne Malvo will be here this coming Tuesday at seven o'clock. So we want to make sure, put that on your calendar, mark that down, spread the word that the one and only Dr. Julianne Malvo will be here with Dr. George C. Frazier and myself this coming Tuesday. Uh, so make Who's sure- Thursday? Who's share. Thursday? Next Thursday. Pastor Freddie Haynes. I mean, the, the lineup that we have, you, George, when you said all stars, you, you were not, you know, playing with that word. We really have a powerful lineup that's coming back to back to back to back to make sure that we continue to edify and educate and train our people. So yeah, next Thursday, man, Pastor Freddie Haynes. Come on. Now we just had Pastor Jamal Bryant this past weekend. Then we have JR, now Julianne Malvo, and then Pastor Freddie Haynes coming next Thursday. So all next week, we're going to be on fire again. So make sure that you tell someone. That's right. And next Saturday, uh, the uh, the president or the CEO of the U.S. Black Chamber of yeah. Congress, Ron Busby, uh, who takes no prisoners. Um, incredible, incredible mind on on what we need to be doing as entrepreneurs as we climb out of this pandemic hole that we're in. So mm -hmm. JR, uh, you were right in that line of pedigree and uh, you, you, you did an awesome job and we love you and we appreciate you for that. 
for those brothers and sisters um, who, uh, who, who, who became a part of the oversubscription from the five uh, person limit uh, for our power networking conference, uh, I apologize. Uh, we took the first five. Of course, they come in as and they're time stamped. So we just took the first five. If you didn't hear back from us, obviously you didn't make it. So you now have a new day to take advantage of a very special uh, uh, all-star podcast uh, offer that we only make during our podcast. And it is a limited time and a limited number of people. Um, you're, if you've followed us, if you've been on this, you, you know what it is. Um, the uh, Power Networking Conference, again, is scheduled for July 8th. We are close to making a decision about moving it to October. We do not want to put our brothers and sisters uh, at risk. Uh, as you know, uh, we have the highest percentage per capita of getting this um, infection, or this flu, uh, uh, than anyone in, a, in the country. So we want to be, we want to be ultra safe. So we'll keep you informed of that. But bottom line, the conference will go on this year. So the offer is, as you know, an adult registration for the Power Networking Conference is $1,500. If you met one person that in fact could uh, could help change the trajectory of your life, would that be worth $1,500? I would say yes. Uh, joining us at the conference um, this year uh, is Dr. Boyce Watkins uh, and all of the usual spec uh, suspects, as, including uh, J.R. Finway. Um, uh, Dr. Randall Pinkett will be a part of it. I don't want to start listing names because there's 50 of the baddest brothers and sisters on the planet that teach and train and coach and at our conference. A special guest this year, uh, and you want to be there. This is this this and this is a special guest. Um, we have established the International Marcus Garvey Award. We will be giving out the first award at the conference. The first recipient of that award will be Dr. Julius Garvey, a physician, the son of Marcus Garvey. Mm. He's 85, 86 years old. So you are going to meet a direct descendant, the son of probably one of the greatest leaders that have ever led uh, black people, certainly in this country, if not the world. Um, I spent two weeks with him in Africa uh, in November. And every place we went in Africa, uh, they had a parade for Dr. Julius Garvey. He is one of the most ce celebrated African-Americans on the continent. He actually got us in to meet with the presidents of these countries. So he will be with us. He will be getting the first International Marcus Garvey Award. As you know, Forbes magazine named the Power Networking Conference one of the top five conferences in America not to be missed. Not one of the top five black conferences, but one of the top five of all conferences put on this country, put on in this country. Um, so uh, an adult registration, is 1500. We encourage you to bring a young person, 17 to 25. A student registration is 800. That package together is $2,300. We're taking off $1,900. And for the first five persons who are smart enough to do it, you get it for $399. Mm. It costs us more than that just to feed you at the Power Networking Conference. So the first five, how do you get it? Simple. You have to email me, gfraser at frasernet.com. That's gfraser at frasernet.com. Say, I'm in. Put your name and your cell number and push the button and email it to me. The first five people, all emails, as you know, are timestamped. Get the offer. If you do not hear back from us, it means you got in uh, after the limit. Okay. So that's the offer. Um, we limit it because as you know, we're doing 30 of these, um, over, a, almost a 10 week period of time. So we have to limit it. It's an extraordinary offer. Uh, and so take advantage of it. If you're, if, 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 if you're inclined to, 
uh, it will be the place to be um, when it when it actually goes off. Because when it goes off, it will be at a time when black people will want to get the hell out of the house because you know black people. <laughs> <laughs> miss black people. Do you know that black people miss black people? Right. Okay. So they will want to go to a conference like this. They'll want to be among brothers and sisters who are teaching business, money, and wellness, psychological wellness, and physical wellness. So take advantage of the offer. And uh, I've got my coach here who is buzzing me. Um, there you go. Uh, and you know, that's, that's our deal. Um, let me close with how I have been closing for the last several weeks. I want you to remember this. I want you to, I want you to memorize this line until black America makes black America first, black America will always be last. We must do the things necessary for us to survive. We have done things for others to help them survive. We must now circle the wagons, all hands on deck, and do whatever it takes by any means necessary to do the things that we must do to survive, to connect, to grow, and to prosper. That's our podcast for tonight. Again, thank you, J.R. Finwick. Thank, thank you, you, Brother Bedford, for being the captain of the ship. And we will see you on Tuesday with none other than Dr. Julianne Malvo. And... Um, We'll tear the roof off the sucker then. I can tell you that as well. <laughs> Julian takes no prisoners. She's funny, but she's serious. Make no mistake about it. God bless you. Have a good evening. All right. Good night. Take care. Good night, everybody. man.